Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Meet Your Grad Reps, a grad chat program run by the Graduate Students Association of the University of Melbourne. My name is Rachna Mudagani. I'm the CEO at the GSA um, organization. And today I have, I've been very fortunate to interview and chat with a few of our newly elected GSA council members. I have Emily Divind, our GSA Vice President, Lillian Day, GSA Gen Secretary, Matthew Harper Gom, who is our GSA Activities Officer, joining me today. And along with me, I have Dr. Natasha Abraham, who is our Senior Policy Coordinator, who supports and manages the Grad Representative Program. So she'll tell you a little bit about what Grad Representatives do at GSA, the important work that they do for us. They do the strong advocacy and lobbying and facilitating the conversation between graduates and their concerns with different aspects of the university. And to join me, I also have Alice Yang, who is the grad rep to the Selection Procedures Committee, and Corey Cribb, the grad reps to Arts Research Training Committee. So that's fantastic to uh, have you on board and welcome to some of the listeners who have joined us today. It's wonderful to have you on, come along. And um, uh, today is going to be an interesting session because you're going to hear about our new GSA Council members, their vision, their, um, you know, why they took up this role, what they wish to achieve in the next 12 months, and also talk about an innovative leadership program that Tevita, our general manager of student engagement, will provide us. But before I commence, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land from where I am broadcasting, the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I'd like to pay my respect to the past, present, and emerging leaders and acknowledge and respect, pay my respect to the Aboriginal and the Torres Strait Islanders. Um, you know, for GSA, these sessions, um, it's been over. We've started these sessions around the third week of March, the webinars, and we find ourselves in a situation where, you know, the pandemic came on. We had a period where we were undergoing through a lockdown. And as of yesterday, there are issues and concerns about community transmission. So the whole organization has had to think, to innovate, and keep the issues of the graduates very deep in our heart and ensure our programs cater to the needs. But all this is actually not possible until the organization has a very, very strong governance body, that is our council. And this year, we actually had the governance, um, the elections for the council um, totally in a virtual, in an, an online platform. So it was challenging. It had its benefits, but then there were, you know, challenges related to how we run these processes. But also we were very, very fortunate because the council actually proposed a new constitution during the annual general meeting, which has been successful. So the new GSA council members, the 15 members, have a very important task ahead. A, to manage the organization and its strategic vision during the post pandemic or currently in the pandemic stage, but ensure that our leadership team actually continues to keep an eye on strategic issues and concerns of the graduate groups through graduate representatives, graduate um, different staff who work at the organization. But I think the most important thing is currently a few announcements in relation to, you know, to ensure that there's no threat to higher education funding. There is quality education provided at the higher education level are of deep concerns to GSA. So welcome all of you on board. And um, I may just uh, let you know the format is I'm going to spend a couple of minutes talking to each one of you, and then we can have a general discussion. So Emily DeVint, welcome on board. Congratulations on being the newly elected GSA Vice President. And it must be very exciting for you. 
Yeah, this is quite new for me. Um, so I'm very excited to try something new and get into it. I, I really, um, I, I, I really think that students need to have a good experience on campus. Um, so I'm excited to help, hopefully help make that happen. Fantastic. So um, we may go down a little bit of memory lane. And did you know a lot about GSA, Emily, before you kind of put up your hands to be on the GSA Council? I did not know much about GSA before. Uh, yes. I knew that they existed and that they belong in the 188 or that we belong in the 1888 building usually. Um, but that's about it. Um, yeah, I've been on campus for a while. So I did my Bachelor of Science a few years ago and I've worked on campus since uh, 2014. And now I'm back for my master's. So I'm quite familiar with the uni as a whole, but GSA, not so much. Fantastic. And what are you studying, Emily? I'm studying a Doctor of Physiotherapy. I'm in my first year. Fantastic. So a very challenging course. And, you know, um, thank you so much for showing your interest in the GSA governance. So I guess you have 12 months of a tenure where, you know, um, your representatives have elected you. And what do you want, what do you wish to achieve from your, the, you know, the position that you have taken up? Let's talk about the organization first and then for you personally. Yeah, in terms of the organisation, I'm, I'm really excited to start implementing the new constitution yeah. um, and developing new electoral regulations to make sure it's modern and equitable for everyone. Um, and so we can, uh, you know, imp just implement the new constitution to the, to the best of our abilities. Um, in terms of me personally, I'm really excited to, one, learn a whole lot. I've got lots to learn and I'm really excited to do so. And I've got lots of advocacy interests, uh, mainly to do with campus issues um, and student issues directly relating to the university. Fantastic. I think you've really brought a very important point. You know, the new constitution, the GSA's constitution, has been such a brilliant piece of work where people have put in a lot of effort to increase student participation. The aim is like, let's look at the best way of improving student participation. And, um, you know, heard and loud and clear when we made the previous proposal. And so I think the fact that, you know, there's a commitment now that we've got the constitution right, I think greater stress needs to be put into ensuring the electoral process actually articulates and does the work that the intended in the constitution. So that's such an important piece of work. But I think in relation to advocacy and lobbying, it's so important because I think the last 12 to 16 weeks has actually highlighted, and we'll hear a little more from Natasha, a uh, little into the program, the importance for us to address issues of graduates as they emerge, because probably, um, you know, great policies are developed and suggested with good intentions on mind. But as long as we know that you know, one, a one-size-fit policy does not actually suit all the needs of the graduates and you know, for council members to keep the organization honest, transparent, and accountable, we just need to ensure that we are hearing what graduates say, we are liaising with the university and facilitating that. So thank you so much, Emily. It's wonderful to have you on board. And I think a lot of learning is, it's a joint learning process and I look forward to doing that with you. Thank you, Rashna, me too. And um, I may then move on to uh, Lillian Day, who is our General Secretary. And welcome on board, Lillian. I feel you've only been here for about a couple of weeks, but I've, I've actually feel over the short period of time, I've actually worked with you for a century because that's the complex nature of the Gen Sec role. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Rashna. Um, yeah, so I'm a first year, first semester um, Master of Social Policy student. So um, I did do a Bachelor of Arts at Melbourne Uni. Um, but I've only just come back and this is my first time really getting involved with um, student issues. So I'm really, really happy to be here. Fantastic. Thank you so much for showing the interest. And I, I think that, um, you know, I understand from, from you after I met you that, you know, you 
understand that the GenSec role is a very challenging role. You know, it almost is the person who keeps the entire operations of the council, 15 members um, streamlined and facilitate that. Um, did you have any idea before you joined, but um, you just thought it was a good challenge to take up? Yeah, uh, I was really lucky to get some help and advice and support from um, some other people I know who are also in the council. Um, and that was fantastic. So I knew a little bit about what I was getting into, but overall, I think it's just a really fantastic challenge for me. And um, uh, it's just fantastic that I can both um, help graduate students and, and do good things for all of us and at the same time develop my skills, especially my professional skills. Fantastic. I think the most important thing for you as the person who manages the, um, you know, gen secretary role is that it's a lot of understanding about how you maintain, you know, a camaraderie and integrity and honesty between the council members and uh, your commitment to your representatives, but also support the staff um, over the process. And we've been very, very fortunate over the past few years to have people like Emily Roberts, who was a gen secretary for a period of time. We had Madeline Johnson last year and many other general secretaries over the past few, few years. And I think the most exciting part of the Gen Secretary role is that you get to work very closely with the staff, but you also are there apart from supporting us to, you know, smoothly operate as an organization, be, being a support and being a facilitator in, with your colleagues in the, um, in the council. So what do you propose to achieve apart from, you know, supporting us with operational? And I think you said personally, you'd like to go grow into a professional role. But for an organization as GSA, what do you think is an important aspect for you to keep advocating for graduates? Yeah, I think there are a few things I'm really passionate about. But one of the first ones, I think, is making sure that GSA has really good reach with the student population and, and that we're working very closely with them and, and keeping them up to date with what's happening and just improving um, the engagement that we already have to make it work as smoothly as we possibly can. Yeah, that's true. And for you, I think you said to me at your first meeting is that you really want to be true about what we are as an organization, isn't it? That our policies and processes actually reflect the needs of the graduates. I remember you saying it kind of closely aligns with your values about engagement. Absolutely. And I think as a policy student as well, I can see the value in having a truly collaborative process when it comes to making policy. But um, also I can understand where it can fall apart if it hasn't been done right. So that's something I'm, I'm really um, set on is making sure that we're working with the graduate students as much as possible to make the best policies for them and to help them as much as possible. Fantastic. Lily, thank you so much. I know it's a very challenging role and, you know, it's a role that works um, extremely close with my position as a CEO, but also with the president and other aspects of the organization, hours and hours of administrative compliance. But I think even just over the short period of time that I've worked with you, you have never stopped impressing me with your oh, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. <laughs> Wonderful. I always kind of uh, worry about these roles which have, you know, all the I's to be dotted and the T's to be crossed. So it's, um, it, um, we are there to support you and we really look forward to working with you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that so much. I'm so excited to be doing this role. Fantastic. Um, so I um, welcome on board Matthew. We have Matthew Harper Gong, who is the GSA Activities Officer. And I, I know he's in the midst of heavy exams and, you know, um, taking on this additional GSA afternoon grad chat is one, a short break from a long run for a big exam. So welcome on board, Matthew. 
so uh, Matthew, would you be able to tell me a little bit of yourself as well as what you'd like to achieve as a GSA council member, particularly focusing on activities. So a bit about myself. Uh, yeah, I'm a first year JD student, first semester. Uh, so pretty pretty new to the graduate scene. Um, but yeah, like like Lily, I did an arts degree here before. So I know, know my way around the uni, I guess, but first time sort of getting involved in GSA, uh, which I'm really excited about. And um, as a JD student, is that a kind of uh, advocacy lobbying kind of interest that you got onto GSA or what was the interest in getting onto a GSA council? Yeah, definitely the, the activism side of things, advocacy, lobbying, um, but definitely the activism uh, in, you know, in it's important, I think, yeah, to do things like active advocacy and lobbying, but also bringing students along with you and not necessarily doing it on behalf of students, but making them feel like they're really empowered in that process um, and more sort of enabling that and providing the resources for that to happen. Uh, so that's that's sort of what I'd like to see um, in my time here and also more so in just sort of having a coordinating role, I guess, as the activities officer. You're not uh, necessarily representing a, a group yourself, but more so just coordinating uh, other campaigns and the ability of other people to. Uh, do the things they want to do yeah fantastic i think gsa activities officer is so important because as matt said is it's not just about running the activities it's actually ensuring it's not to fill, fill up a timetable and tick the box it's about saying how cost effectively we are running them as lily said reaching out to people and as emily said truly being good advocates in at the campus on behalf of everyone and trying to use our limited resources effectively. So I think um, we as staff members, as, as usual, we may know the logistics of running an event, but the event should be actually, um, you know, the needs need to be recognized. It's important that the um, students have, are taken along and they're, um, they can participate effectively and evaluate our programs of its um, effectiveness and the ability to embed lobbying and advocacy in the work that we do. So Matt, from your perspective, and you know, I know you're very new to hire uh, your master's program, but you've kind of been in your master's program, which started quite relatively early, and then suddenly you went on to a um, face, you know, online platform. Uh, what do you think some of the challenges have been for you as a person participating in an, a JD program, particularly in an online platform? Yeah, there's definitely been a lot of lot of challenges, I think, um, because especially with something like the JD, it's such an intensive program. You're on campus usually and you're around people and you're doing all of these things uh, with people on campus. So now that's all sort of not been able to happen uh, now that we're online, obviously. And I think that takes away a really important aspect of what, you know, a post, you know, postgrad and any university experience should be, which is, you know, building those communities um, and having that sort of, you know, physical presence where you can get together with people and do things. And all that's sort of been just paired back to, you know, just learning stuff online now, which, um, yeah, it definitely makes the job a lot harder for us in terms of things like advocacy, I think. Uh, yeah. So I think, yeah, yeah we've been, GSA has been very good in, yeah, trying to address those challenges. Thank you, Matthew. And um, I just wanted to probably come back to you is what would you like to achieve professionally? But, you know, through this, you have a 12 month off period where JD is a lot about advocacy, lobbying, networking, you know, ensuring our legislation is aligned to what our community needs are. So you'll be expanding your horizon in all those areas. For you professionally, what can GSA offer? Mm. Um, well, I think if at the end of the 12 months, I can look back and say, you know, we've gotten more students engaged and more people feel empowered uh, to, to go out there in their communities on campus, out in the wider community, uh, then I think that that'll have been a win. Um, I'll be be proud of that. Um, so yeah, however however we can do that, basically, I think is is what we want to do. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. 
Thank you so much. And as I said, is I think what I have heard from all these new council members and totally excited about it because their values of being on the council is so truly aligned with the values of our organization, the values of being empowered, the value of collaboration, the value of respect, the value of cohesiveness. And I think, um, you know, individuals whose values are aligned to an organizational value just allows the governance structures to be strong because it allows them to challenge some of the work that we do and say, do we really do this because it's easy to do or because we've done it for many years or is it what the needs are of our community? So I can assure Emily, Lily and Matt that staff are absolutely committed to uh, working alongside into ensuring better engagement. So um, Emily, what would be the best way for graduates to contact you is, um, you know, of course, we would facilitate these kind of workshops and forums. But um, would you, um, do you have any preferred way of being contacted, Emily? Yeah, absolutely. I encourage you to email me. My email is jsa-vicepresident at unimail.edu.au. So Fantastic. please email me if you have any issues. Fantastic. And I think um, it's important that the communication to the council members are, it could be as, as simple as what you're experiencing. And, you know, if you are able to raise those issues with the graduate council, uh, the GSA council members, they are, have direct contact through the chancellery, through our, our council meetings to educate and inform us. So all these um, contact details will be put on, um, on our website and their photographs and um, their contact details are there. But as Emily said, she would really like to hear from you through an um, email if there are any issues that you'd like to address or draw her attention to any concerns. What about you, Lillian? Um, what's your best way to be communicated? What do you, um, do you like enjoy? You're looking forward to attending some of the grad groups and talking to them? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to get into more contact with the grad groups. Um, and anyone can send me an email um, whenever they like about these kinds of graduate issues uh, at gensec, G-E-N-S-E-C, at gsa.unimel.edu.au. Thank you so much, Lily. I'm sure... Uh, people who have been listening or, you know, they can go to our website to get these details. But Matt, you have a very challenging role where you will be uh, working with the staff and supporting guidance and providing some guidance or, you know, working with the staff in delivering some of our programs. And I think for you, the importance of our graduate community's engagement is the prime focus, isn't it? So um, how do you think the best way for you to be informed about the effectiveness of the program is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, yeah, there's an email for the activities officer. So yeah, you can reach out to me through that, but I'm definitely gonna try and get along to as many activities as I can um, that have been run by the GSA or by grad groups. So keep an eye out for me in person. You know, if you've got any ideas, I'd love to have a chat. Anything you wanna see the GSA do, uh, especially in regards to activities, but you know, anything. Um, yeah, I'm always open. Thank you so much, um, Matt. And for us at GSA, really the activities officer role and the grad groups and the work that the staff do, they're seamless and they kind of influence one another. So I think please, uh, wherever, you know, please reach out to Matt, please, Lily and Emily. If, um, I mean, we welcome constructive feedback but it could be an idea, it could be a concern. And I think uh, I am totally committed over the next 12 months to ensure that we reach out to you as extensively as possible so that we understand our services are limited. We will not be in a position to meet your, all your needs, but definitely there's an endeavor and an attempt to ensure that we're as flexible and we reach out to people who are in the most of need and we don't duplicate our services where services are very effective. So thank you so much to all the council members, but I am going to move over to inviting Natasha, 
who is our senior policy coordinator. And many of you must have listened to Natasha over the last six months, six, 12, 16 weeks, talking a lot about all the graduate representative work that they do. So uh, welcome on board, Natasha. Would you be, be able to give me a bit of an overview of what is the work undertaken by the representative team and why it's important? Thank you, Rachna. So in the GSA representation team, we are responsible for um, supporting students to do empowered advocacy within the university and sometimes outside of the university as well to external stakeholders. One part of what we do um, is managing a network of about 50 student representatives to different university committees. So these are decision making communities throughout the university on a range of topics. So the most high level committee um, we have a representative to is academic board. We also have student representatives to a number of teaching and learning committees, research committees within the different faculties, a few on different school committees. And uh, we also um, have some on general committees such as the childcare, um, sustainability, all different things where senior people in the university get together and make decisions um, about our um, about university policy. So we want to make sure that there is a student, a graduate student in the room um, who is there to represent that graduate student voice. Um, so what we do to support our committee reps, we have um, well-established recruitment and training processes. So we interview um, all of our um, committee reps before we match them to a committee that's appropriate for their skills and interests. Uh, we go through and train them before they start to understand. I think, um, Natasha, I think we're kind of losing you in between. I think the mic is probably, uh, we're getting a bit of blurredness, but um, would, I may just see if we can get you to speak a little okay. closer to the mic. Okay. Okay. Um, is that better? Yeah, it's definitely better. Okay, sure. So um, we support our network of about 50 student representatives with that recruitment, training, and then ongoing support. So before and after every committee meeting, we're always in touch with our committee reps. We help them out with agenda papers, preparation of reports and briefing papers, um, and providing them with advice on how to best pursue different issues. Um, so we really put, put a lot of effort into supporting our committee reps to be empowered members of their committees. We also bring those bring together all of our committee members um, three times a semester in our graduate leaders forum. So there's lots of support um, and networking between our um, committee representatives. Fantastic. And we have two guests today joining us who are grad representatives. So Natasha, can I get you to introduce Alice Yang and Corey Cribb, please? Yes, um, so we're fortunate to have two of our wonderful graduate committee representatives on the call with us today. So we have Alice, who is our representative to the Selection Procedures Committee. And that's the committee that advises and makes recommendations on the selection of students into courses or subjects. Alice is a Master of Biotechnology student and she commenced her course this year. Um, and she's been on that committee um, for about four months. Fantastic. We also have Corey, who is our representative to the Arts Research Training Committee. Um, and that's the committee that provides information and advice to the Arts Faculty Board on policy matters relating to research training. And Corey has been on that committee since last year, and he's a PhD student in the School of Culture and Communication within the Faculty of Arts. So I'd love to introduce um, first Alice to tell us a little bit about her experiences um, as a committee rep and the main issues facing um, her cohort at this time. Hi everyone, really happy to be here. Thanks Natasha, thanks Rashna for inviting me. Um, so, as, uh, so my experience as a grant rep, it's quite exciting, but at the same time a little bit daunting just because um, I recently just moved to Melbourne. I did my bachelor's back in Sydney at UNSW and I was um, a part of a student association there as well and the biggest difference where I said it was daunting is because it's really different interacting with students than with actual university committee members mm -hmm. and I guess the first thing I learned is to actually understand what the agenda is about 
<laughs> it could be a little bit hard to read and understand. Um, and overall, sorry, I kind of lost track of the question. Sorry. So we were just wanting to know, uh, I mean, I think you're in the right way because I think if, as you said, as a representative, when you sit on a, on a faculty, the first thing would be to actually understand what the purpose of you are there. That must have been some a big learning cur curve for you, isn't it, Alice? Oh yeah, it, it is um, It is a steep learning curve for me, but at the same time, uh, I had a lot of amazing support from Natasha and she has helped me uh, with a lot of questions that I have. So uh, overall, it's I'm getting on track now. <laughs> So That's I think we okay now. <laughs> fantastic. And can I ask you, in relation to the role, do you feel you're heard when you are sitting in these faculty groups and you're, you know, talking on behalf of the students? Um, I feel like in general, um, they really value a student, uh, a voice from student reps because they wanted to know um, the student's point of view. But at the same time, I guess uh, it depends on how you talk sometimes it um, because sometimes you get to observe a little bit and see what everyone feels about one particular policy and and sometimes you need to actually give a lot of reasons to back your point up just so they could really take your suggestion into consideration. Fantastic. And what do you think some of the issues are, Alice, at the moment for some of, you know, when you sit and lobby for, like, what do you, from your experience, what are some of the issues faced by our graduates at the moment? Uh, I think at the moment, I'm seeing that there are still a lot of graduate students that don't really um, know about GSA as yeah. a whole. And um, I've talked to a couple of my classmates and I guess from, because I'm an international student and coming from an international student point of view, it's very rare that students will really seek out for help. Normally yeah. they just, that, oh, it's okay. I'll just, um, I'll just bear with it. I'll just see um, what will happen next instead of actually reaching out for help. So sometimes you need to actually go up to them and ask, hey, what do you think we could do to help? What do you think? Um, I think there are things to be, cha um, sorry, to be changed and if you need any support. So I guess the major part is to um, raising more awareness of GSA to graduate students. That's fantastic suggestion, Alice. And, and I think our council members are, as you've heard, from them, they're absolutely committed to that, whether it's Emily, Lillian, and Matthew, to ensure that GSA is out there talking to people about what we can offer and reaching them out. Because I think, you know, we, um, whether it's 1888 and the events that we uh, um, kind of hold with just about eight to nine staff, we're just not going to be able to get out there. But I think each one of us making an attempt to connect to our community will allow us to actually reach out. That's so valuable. So uh, to, uh, Natasha, over to you to introduce Corey and to tell us a little bit about what he's doing in his group. Yeah, um, so Corey is our graduate representative to the Arts Research Training Committee. Um, so he's been working on issues relating to extension policies um, for graduate researchers. I'd like to speak to Corey um, you can a bit about you, um, what I got into presentation and the challenges that um, that you're dealing with on your committee, um, and how that experience has been. So, so Corey, in case you missed that question, it was mainly about what your role is and what kind of challenges you have been facing. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, so I guess my my role, generally speaking, is to uh, you know try and support all graduate students in the in the Faculty of Arts and make sure that they are the university and that the policies are favorable to uh, a, a good um, experience for graduate researchers. Um, I, the, the challenges that I've found are, are largely, I think, to do with the, the nature of, uh, 
of bureaucracy and, and, and really the one of the most interesting things about this role has been, has been a kind of crash course in, or, or in how the decision making gets made at a and that the university is very good at dealing with things that are kind of you know developed slowly that can can be changed through incremental adjustments but when it comes to dealing with crises like the kind of fallout from COVID-19 uh, things become a little bit more challenging <laughs> to say the least. Yes, absolutely. And Corey, um, can I ask you a couple of questions? Is that um, you did talk about, you know, understanding bureaucracy, you know, because it's a large organization. And um, I mean, with all intent, we would like to listen. I'm sure that everybody likes to listen to everyone. But did you feel the ability to sometimes agree to disagree is a talent that you learn when you're sitting in these committees? Because sometimes you know, you either feel you're not heard or sometimes you take a decision and you feel you agree to disagree. Is that some skills that you learn as a graduate in sitting on these committees? I definitely think you have to learn to, to tolerate it. Uh, I felt particularly in the, the early stages of my involvement with the board, uh, the board that I had to work very hard to kind of, I don't know, not just, not necessarily earn respect, but get people to kind of take my opinion on board. And, and when you're sitting on a board with, with a lot of very established academics who are all very articulate and, and you know who all have very well formulated opinions about every kind of issue that comes up and all of them disagree to some extent you know there's it's very rare to find 100 percent consensus uh, so i definitely think that that's that's part of it learning to disagree but also learning to give really strong reasons as, as, as alice suggested for, for why certain uh you know, certain views need to be taken into account when, when decisions are being made. Fantastic. Fantastic. And uh, can I just talk to you a little bit about researchers and the faculty that you have been, um, you know, representing GSA? It's been challenging and we all know all the different diverse challenges that are there. What do you think a couple of two or three highlighted issues that you've been advocating on? Um, if I can sort of Go back uh, to, to last year or, or pre-COVID times at least. Yeah. Uh, desk spaces was a really big issue for a while. Uh, and that was one that we had a really big win on as well. Uh, the GSA were heavily involved in this campaign to basically ensure that the faculty uh, brought itself into line with the university's promise to have a desk. Uh, you know, every full-time researcher who wants a desk should have a full-time desk at their disposal. Yeah. And something that now has been achieved. Unfortunately, nobody's able to use their desks at the moment in yeah. the, the current situation. Um, more recently, I mean, you know, there are other little issues going on around, uh, you know, internship programs and, and thesis prizes. These things seem to sort of, you know, the biggest issue at the moment is to do with the response to COVID-19 and what kinds of affordances graduate students who have been uh, disrupted or, or disadvantaged by, um, you know, having to, to work from home and, and being withdrawn from the academic community, uh, you know, how they can be, be supported really and helped. And um, my final question to you is, Corey, when you took on this role, you know, like when you um, put up your hand to take on this role, I understood from Alice that, you know, one good suggestion is just trying to get out to people to make people understand about GSA. Did you have much to do with GSA or was it just an interest that you had to do in advocacy that you put up your hand? What, how did you get to GSA and this role? So I actually came from a, um, a grad group, uh, which, you know, does a very similar thing, I guess, in some ways to what I, I do in this role, but at school level rather than at faculty level, which is the um, culture and communication graduate committee and was involved in various sort of advocacy issues there and um, was offered the spot on the board as, as a kind of result of that involvement. So uh, I feel like it was a fairly, in some ways, a fairly natural transition, but I didn't sit on the research training committee uh, at school level. So, uh, you know, basically uh, representation on a board and, and, and you know, what it means uh, or, or how you go about actually trying to make a case for these issues when uh, when you're you know in a room with a with a group of other sort of uh, well-informed and articulate people. 
Fantastic. Thank you, Corey and Alice. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I know for the listeners, there's been a bit of breaking up of our, um, you know, mics that's there, but I'm sure uh, Andrew Lee, who is our expert, will be doing something about it. But thank you so much for your time, Alice and uh, Corey. And I encourage graduates who uh, are, you know, new to the university or people who are interested, please join grad groups. They are such an amazing we have about 149 grad groups, um, you know, diverse interest, a great opportunity to get together with like-minded people. Many of them have been very proactive in the period, even during the pandemic period. And I think it allows um, amazing networking. It allows, um, you know, the ability to advocate on issues that are very close to you, ability to meet with people from your industry and faculty. And I think um, there's lots of information on our website. So Natasha, um, thank you so much for, um, you know, bringing on Alice and Corey and talking a little bit about the work that the representation team. But just before you go, where would people who are listening to this program, where do they look for vacancies about grad representatives? How do they know that there are vacancies there and how they can apply? And I'm just mindful about your mic. So just, um, if you can just slowly talk, that would be great. Thanks, Sasha. So when we do have vacancies on committees, we will advertise that on our website in the representation section, and we'll also advertise that on our social media. Near the end of the year, we're going to do a take for all the new representatives next year, as well as the existing representatives will be finishing their courses or others moving on. So definitely I after that on the representation section of the website. Okay. So I think um, for those who weren't able to listen to that because of the mic is that they are advertised on the website in our graduate representative um, on, you know, section that is there. The um, EDMs or the electronic distribution mailing list often covers information about this. Please reach out to our graduate representative team. And, you know, I think the best way I've always found very helpful is talk to people like Alice and Corey, get in touch with their student emails, because what happens is if they can tell you what the lived experience is and really the time commitment, it's a great opportunity to know a little bit about uh, the role and how, you know, you're supported by the staff at GSA. So once again, a big thank you to Emily, Lily, and Matthew for joining the GSA Council. Congratulations once again. We look forward to working with you. And thank you, Alice and Corey, for being strong advocates as graduate representatives on, um, for, on behalf of the graduates of GSA. And I take very much Alice's point of view that, you know, we definitely appreciate and value the constructive feedback we get about GSA being out there and reaching out to people. And I don't think our journey is ever fulfilled by the staff or the council. And it's the graduate community have, who have to help us, you know, promoting the work that we do. And actually the work that we do has to be articulated to explain its value that, you know, it's more than any time the importance of ensuring that we are able to do constructive advocacy for our community. So at this point of time, I'd like to invite Tevita Lusuma, our general manager for graduate student engagement, who is also responsible for um, the implementation of the LEAD. So Tevita, off to you to explain what the acronym LEAD is and a little bit about the program. Thank, thanks so much, Rosh. And again, thanks to all the uh, our graduate students uh, on the call today. It's really great to, to hear from them and know that um, they're representing their, their students um, here with GSA. Uh, so for us, uh, one of our big projects this year uh, is LEAD, so Leadership, Exploration and Development. Um, it's a program we've put in, been putting together and delivering for, this will be the third year. Uh, it obviously will look slightly different in the fact that it's a leadership program that is done uh, online. Uh, where traditionally it was face-to-face -face, um, with some interactions in that way. But uh, nevertheless, the, the content that we're putting together is um, basically about 
uh, students um, that sign up, and it is free uh, to, to sign up. You just need to be a postgraduate student at the University of Melbourne. And essentially, uh, the, the process is to take you through a journey about understanding leadership, your style, um, where where you get your, you know, how that's linked to your values, um, the confidence in leading, um, and also the resilience of being a leader. So um, a few of the topics that we'll be covering over 12 weeks, um, it'll be an online delivery um, and applications are opening this week. So please look out for any of our social media posts, it'll definitely be on the website, uh, apply. And we're looking to, to sort of get those involved who haven't really been able to get a leadership role or have struggled to always be that person to, to put their hand up or uh, potentially uh, the quietest voice in the room is to probably give those guys a, an opportunity to, to have ex some exposure to, to leadership. And that's how we're going to, we're gearing it this year, um, especially in this virtual arena. Um, I think it's uh, the situation COVID-19 has really um, hit home with us about providing better accessibility to our, our programs for those who are maybe traditionally like can't get to campus. And so, yeah, so that's, that's how we're going to roll it out um, this semester. So please look out for that. Um, and on top of that, we, with the social, um, the social connectedness and building healthy communities. The student engagement team have put together um, a weekly program of activities and, and ways to sort of shake off the exam stress and anxiety that's that's there. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm happy to go through those also too, if you want, Roshna. Yeah, that would be helpful because I think it is an exam period and I am uh, very grateful to some of um, people who have come on board today because I know they have exams tomorrow and a couple of days later. But I think, um, you have some effective programs with uh, academic skills and it would be great to kind of even support people with their emotional health and well-being during that period. Yeah, absolutely. So um, like, like today, uh, during this uh, SWOT back and exam periods, we're running four uh, live webinars a week. So Monday to, Friday, uh, Monday to Thursday, 3 to 4 p.m. Um, and uh, today was obviously a discussion around leadership and our our, um, our amazing uh, graduate student representatives that we have on council and in our faculties and schools and departments. Uh, tomorrow, um, we will be having our yoga session. So uh, at 12 o'clock, 12 to 12.30, we have um, a yoga session online. So please jump online to register for that, something to help you with your mind uh, and, and body and, and spirit, if you'd like, for tomorrow. Uh, Tuesday, uh, that's tomorrow again, 3 p.m., I'll be talking to the NTU and talking about um, workplace rights for postgraduates in, in this environment. So talking to the guys that will represent um, all postgrads. So postgrads uh, get a free membership to the, to the union. Um, so please, if, you, if you're keen or want to know more about your workplace rights, jump onto that call. Um, then on Wednesday, we have a drop-in dance session. It's a 90s theme, so uh, very close to my heart. So uh, 12, I won't be running this session, by the way, but it's uh, 1.30 that'll be. It'll be posted on our Facebook page to drop in live. On Wednesday also, uh, 3 to 4, we uh, have a special guest from uh, Victoria Legal Aid Service. So they're coming on board to talk uh, to us about young people and their interactions with uh, police. So, um, you know, especially with a lot of marches and demonstrations going on, it's probably a good good way to jump on the call, understand what your rights are in that sense, or, you know, what's the process? Because, um, yeah, so they'll, they'll be talking to us to be able to facilitate support for any student that sort of comes across uh, a situation that they're involved with the police. Uh, Thursday, uh, we're working with uh, Melbourne Uni Sport. Uh, we've got a sport class coming up there. So again, Facebook, um, to, to look at the link, the time will be midday. Uh, later that day, at 2 p.m., we have a conversation club. So we have a, a group of students that have signed into our uh, connection in isolation work uh, uh, Facebook group, which is on our Facebook page. And a lot of ideas have come around about what people want to talk about, you know. So this week's topic is friends. So if you've got any comments or interests or questions regarding that series, uh, the guys will be talking about that at 2 p.m. on Thursday. And, and an hour later on the Thursday, 3 p.m. again, we talk about exam anxiety. So um, with the help of CAPS and their resources, we'll be talking through some, uh, some, some ways to deal with some of the stresses that are involved around this time of year and some, some coping strategies for students. And then lastly, on Friday, we have our Feel Good Fridays um, series. And uh, just like any other Friday, 3 p.m., we have a local artist streaming live through our Facebook to sort of ring in the weekend. So yeah, a jam-packed week, um, but also a few uh, a few hot ticket items next week with uh, support from CAPS and working through mindfulness strategies um, for, for next week and dealing with 
potential anxiety around results. Um, and then also we have our guests at uh, careers and employability uh, talking us through, you know, interview and networking skills as well as trying to maintain a good LinkedIn profile. So that's happening next week. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, particularly with Al, what Alice said in mind, I just want to know, let people know who are listening to this program, how you participated in this program. GSA's attempt to put this on webinars are really to reach out to students who are also overseas because I know, unfortunately, there are a whole lot of people who are um, not even in Australia and they're overseas and, you know, they can watch these programs at times that are convenient for them. They still be able to link with people from the academic support and, um, you know, be able to remain connected through uh, the networking of the um, your own faculty as well as the graduate group in our community. So um, first of all, I think it's really, really important for us to acknowledge and it's important from GSE's perspective as a part of being a members of the community that um, we do have some um, enforced restrictions on us currently to manage our public safety and uh, GSA will not be open to our graduate community for any face-to-face -face interaction till the 31st of July. And that is because of you know, our current public health concerns and it's important that we adhere to it. But in no way that is um, uh, going to hinder us from remaining connected. So please ensure that you contact us on uh, our proposed emails, our one, 800 GSA call numbers, the details of our contact details are on our website. And uh, today we've been very fortunate. We've had four uh, council members, Mia, Centari, Lily Day, Emily DeVint, and Matthew Harper Gorman, Gorm, who have spoken to us. Please remain connected to the GSA council. You know, send them your ideas, voice in your opinions. Please let us in be um, challenged with our thoughts and that will help us to deliver our services more effectively. So it is good day from me here at, um, from the Grad Chat program and we look forward to um, hosting our next program tomorrow. But I do want to particularly shout out to our student engagement and our communication team and particularly to Andrew Lee who supports us with you know organizing the webinars day after day monday to friday and christine who coordinates all the activities so a big thank you to our student engagement team under the leadership of tavita lisuma and our comm staff that is Stuart and vivian so um uh, i look forward to meeting you again at the next webinars thank you and goodbye <laughs>